Will cramming more socks into your boots actually help keep your toes warm? We're gonna explore that and a whole bunch of other great tips for staying warm uh, outdoors and enjoying nature in the wintertime. Winter really is one of my favorite seasons and there's so much that we can learn about the natural world out here from the birds, from the animal tracks, from the trees. Uh, there's so much to explore, but if you're cold, it's really hard to enjoy it. In my early 20s, I used to actually lead wilderness expeditions and winter camping trips, as well as multi-night dog sled expeditions, and I learned a ton of great tips for staying warm, and I wanna share some of my top ones with you in this video. Now, what you wear in the outdoors is only one piece of staying warm. You actually need the right clothes, but you also need to put the right fuel into your body, and you need the right attitude to go out with to begin. So I'm gonna break down each one of those with a few top tips for them. Let's start with clothing though, because that is such an important one. Now, first off, think about, you know, how do all the animals stay warm that are living out here 365 days a year, 24 hours a day? Think about the tiny little squirrels or the little chickadees for that matter. What do they do to stay warm when they're out here all the time? They don't have the option to just throw on layers and layers of clothing. Now the chickadee, what it does is it fluffs up its feathers. The squirrel, on the other hand, it builds a nest full of leaves. And there's one principle that both of those two strategies use that helps keep them warm. And that's the concept of dead airspace. And dead airspace is basically the idea that, so all of these clothings are made out of fiber. And when we put fiber on top of ourselves, sure it stops a little bit of the wind from coming in and it traps a little bit of the heat inside of it. But those tiny matrix of fiber also have little pockets of air in between them. So as the body that we create inside of our system starts to uh, dissipate from our body and go outwards, we actually warm those tiny little air pockets. And not all fiber is created equally when it comes to uh, slowing the dissipation of that heat from our body and allowing us to warm those air pockets inside of it. So the absolute worst one, if you haven't heard the saying cotton kills already, this is probably the most important part. Cotton is terrible as an insulation. Uh, it does little to stop uh, heat from escaping your body and there's not much for dead airspace. Just the way that the matrix of fiber works and the quality of it, uh, it doesn't allow you to warm up uh, those little tiny air pockets. And when it gets wet, uh, that fiber mats together and it means there's no dead airspace in there, means it doesn't keep you wet or doesn't keep you warm. So get rid of everything cotton. No jeans, no sweatpants, uh, no even cotton shirts as a base layer. That's part number one to throw out there. So if we're not using cotton, what do we want to use? This is the reason that wool is far more superior for keeping you warm because the wool fiber, one, when it gets wet, it doesn't mat as much as cotton, so you still keep the, the fiber in there. So wool will actually offer some insulative value even when it's wet. Uh, on top of that, wool is just generally thicker and allows more little pockets of air in between it. So it's a lot easier. It captures a lot more heat on the exterior of your body. Now, some people tolerate wool different than others. And what I'd like to say about that is, you know, if you can use straight wool, uh, it's fantastic. If you can't, merino wool is an awesome choice as well. Now, wool can often be expensive if you buy it new, but there's lots of ways to come across good deals on wool. A lot of the wool that I bought, this one here is my favorite piece of winter clothing. I bought this close to 15 years ago for five bucks at the thrift store. It's an old army surplus jacket, or sorry, sweater. It's one of the warmest thing I, I wear. I bought it for five bucks years ago. For getting wool on sale, you can often go to thrift stores. Go to thrift stores in the summertime, because in the winter, good luck finding wool. When people are thinking about the cold, they'll scoop that stuff up. But if you go in the off season, there's a way better chance of scooping up some of that wool clothing there. Sometimes big box stores uh, and wholesale outlets, like places like Costco, are also great places to get a good deal on wool. And I've bought a few great merino wool base layers for super cheap at Costco before. You can also use synthetics like fleece and polypropylene. Uh, although again, I'm a big, big fan of wool. The next thing we want to think about is layers and how you layer yourself and which layers you choose really makes a big difference. So my layering system actually starts with real thin layers. And first off, you don't want anything that's tight because if something's tight, it constricts blood flow. And if you have constricted blood flow, your body's not able to warm it. So make sure all of your layers are actually loose and a little bit baggy. That's point number one there. I've got my thin base layer, and then I got a long sleeve one that goes over it. These are both really, really thin. They're really, really light, but they're phenomenal base layers for starting warmth. And of course, in between each of those layers, you get another barrier of air. So it starts to warm up. From there, I throw on my big wool sweater here, and then I have one additional wool sweater or a hooded sweater that goes over top of that. And that's my basic layer system. And even when it's minus 20 outside, this keeps me nice and warm. 
The other thing that you might want to add to that is a windbreak, because the one downside of wool and natural fiber is wind will blow right through them. So if you wear, uh, that's where you might want like a vinyl uh, layer or a polypro or some sort of wind barrier on the outside of it. Now let's get to the question that I started this video off, which was do more socks actually keep your feet warm? One of the most common things that would happen when I used to guide youth groups out dog sledding is uh, students would come up to me and say, hey Chris, my feet are so cold. And I'd say, how many layers of socks do you have on? And they'd say, I got three. And I'd say, great, take one of those pairs off. And sure enough, their feet would actually start to get warmer when they took a layer off. Because what was happening is their toes were being constricted. They weren't getting proper blood flow. So the first step is actually to get a, a pair of boots that are a little bit larger than your foot to begin with so that there's room to wiggle your toes. If your boots are too tight, they're not gonna work well. And then what I like, I never wear more than two pairs of socks. I have one thin layer that I put on, and then I have a thick wool layer in both of this. My thin layer is merino wool, and then I put a thicker wool layer over top of it. Again, I buy these at army surplus stores and they're really not that expensive. So that's my first layer into my boot. From there, here's a trick that a lot of people don't know, and this one is a total game changer. Get yourself a grocery bag and now wrap that over your foot and stick it into your boot. Uh, putting your foot into a grocery bag before going into your boot, now uh, you're basically trapping that warm air. So imagine the warm heat is being created in your foot. It's being slowed down as it goes into those two layers of uh, wool of your socks. But then it hits the plastic bag, which is impermeable by the air or, or by the um, uh, impermeable to the air. And that it allows that air to sit there and get warm. So a plastic bag can actually be a complete game changer in keeping your foot warm. Sometimes, or I'd say most of the time, it's actually more effective than another layer of socks. Now, beyond that, make sure that you have, as I said, a bigger size boot is really, really helpful. My favorite clothing to wear, and you know, this might be a challenge for some folks because it's a little bit more expensive as a setup, but I'm gonna share it with you as something that you might wanna save up for or work towards. But in my mind, nothing beats a pair of mukluks. Mukluks are leather, they're flexible, which means I can move my toes more, which keeps them warm. They're breathable, which is actually super helpful. Um, and they're lined with a wool uh, insulative layer. So I wear those mukluks over top of those two layers of socks. And then next, I actually stick them into these things called neos. And again, these are a game changer for me because I'm basically just like I had layers for my upper body, I have layers for my feet as well. Thin layer of socks, thick layer of socks, plastic bag, into the mukluk, and then if I need it, I throw on these insulated Neo boots over top that are actually the wind barrier. Uh, they're waterproof and they add another layer of dead air space. And I find this is way warmer than any pair of plastic boots I've ever put on my feet. I just find plastic doesn't make great insulation. Natural fibers work fantastic. For safety, if you don't know about it, another great thing to have in a winter, especially if you're going into icy places, is these little cleats that you slide over top that just give you some friction to stop you from slipping on the ice. All right, the last thing we're gonna chat about on clothing is our hands. So in my mind, one of the best things you can wear or get a hold of, it's a really great investment, is snowmobile mitts. Again, they're fairly expensive, so that might not be an option for some of you, but you can sometimes find these on sale at army surplus stores. The reason that snowmobile mitts are so, so good and so, so warm is because snowmobilers are sometimes out in very, very cold conditions going incredibly fast with the wind blowing up against them. So they make the warmest gloves for snowmobilers. So look into getting a pair of snowmobile mitts. If you can get that, look for them on sale at army surplus stores. Often a great place to find them. Oh yeah, sorry, one more I almost forgot. And this is another complete game changer for me is wool pants. This is maybe the best investment I've ever made for winter clothing. Uh, again, you can buy these at surplus stores. Uh, I found my first pair ever I bought again for I think five or 10 bucks at a thrift store, a Salvation Army store. And they lasted me about eight years. Uh, they are the warmest things I've ever put on my legs. So consider uh, a pair of wool pants for your attire as well. Now that we've talked about clothing, let's chat about the fuel that we put into our body to begin with, because this really makes a huge difference as well, what you eat. The best way I ever had this explained to me is think about what you eat as like building a fire. When you start building a fire, you put on tiny, tiny little twigs. Uh, and the twigs burn really fast, they let off a lot of heat, but then that heat disappears really fast and they go away really quick. That's carbs and sugars. So carbs and sugars will give us a quick blast of energy. Our body turns it into, or turns those into energy really quick. Uh, and it gives us a quick blast of warmth and then they go away really quick. So if you're eating sugar, uh, and not eating a lot of these other two building blocks, you're probably gonna lose your heat really quick. 
If you need to warm up really fast, a little blast of sugar or carbs is probably helpful. Now the next layer is to think about, you know, that kind of like thumb thickness or wrist size piece of firewood. You put those on top of the tiny little twigs that you started the fire with. Now these ones burn quite a bit longer, uh, but you know, an hour from now, they're already starting to, to burn down and lose their heat again. And that's our protein. So after we've got our carbs, our kindling, we put on our protein blocks or our uh, kind of wrist size thick ones, and the protein's gonna give us heat a little bit more. But the big thick logs in our body are actually the good fats. And in the winter time, I eat a ton of good quality fat, especially if I'm gonna be outdoors all day long. And again, it's a complete game changer for keeping me warm. So things like whether it's olive oil and olives or you know, good like quality feta cheese, um, things like nuts and almonds, things like fish, all of those uh, are really, really great fats to keep us going a lot longer. I'll often bring a coffee or a hot chocolate with me out into the field, and I'll actually put butter or coconut oil into my coffee and bring it out. That might be grossing some of you out, but it really makes a big difference. I'm not worried about that uh, put, help putting weight on my body because I'm burning those calories off anyways. So consider adding fat and think about fat as the big logs. Uh, that are gonna keep you warm throughout the day. And you know, the thing about bringing out that hot chocolate with a little bit of sugar and the fat in it, the coconut oil or the butter, is now from the sugar, I'm gonna get a quick blast of heat. And then from the fat, I'm gonna get a longer sustained blast of heat. So there's another tip. Now, the last part I wanna talk about is the attitude we walk out into the woods. And just like anything else, we start to learn in life and form a relationship with it. We form relationships with our spouse or our partner, uh, with our friends. We form relationships with the natural world, with the birds, with the animals, with the trees. And you form a relationship with the cold as well. People that don't have a relationship uh, with black bears, for example, are often very scared of black bears. I live in black bear country. I have no fear of black bears, but I have a relationship with them. I understand them, I understand their behavior, and I understand how to be safe around them. Well, the same goes with the cold. And maybe you've never thought about that before, but I'm gonna challenge you to consider what is your relationship with the cold? Do you have a story in your head about how terrible it is and how cold you get? And that's not to say that you don't get cold, but is that a story that you tell yourself over and over that, oh, I'm always cold, I'm always cold, I hate the cold. Because if you do that, it's gonna probably be hard for you to get over it. So when it comes to creating a relationship with the cold, I just encourage you to push your limits just a little bit. You'll notice I'm sitting out here today and it's snowing and I'm not wearing gloves. And are my hands cold? Well, sure they are, yeah. But I'm not thinking about it. I'm thinking about talking to you guys right now. So they're not actually bothering me. If I sat here thinking, oh, my hands are cold, my hands are cold, then they would feel really, really cold. But I actually hadn't even thought about how cold they were until I brought this up because I've been focused on you. Uh, where we put our focus obviously plays a role in how our mind works. Now, of course, you need to be safe with this, right? Your body can actually get quite cold before you're in a level of danger. So you need to do a risk assessment and say, am I getting like dangerously cold or am I just a little bit of cold? Because if I'm just a little bit cold, you could just say, well, so what? Yeah, my hands are cold, who cares? I can go in my house and warm them up afterwards. Uh, I can still move them fine. I've got circulation. If I pinch them and I let go, the color comes back. Oh, there's no danger there. It's just a little bit uncomfortable. But if I focus on something else, I don't even notice that they're uncomfortable. Uh, one of my top tricks for warming up my hands actually is just to stick them inside my shirt, uh, put them up against my body, stick them into my armpits, and they warm up incredibly fast that way. So that's one of my favorite things. So I'm gonna leave you with a quick challenge right now. Uh, the first one is actually just to think about some of these concepts and think about your layering system uh, that you go outside with and see if there's any way you can improve that. Maybe you're gonna think about a few more thinner base layers. Maybe you're gonna add the plastic bag to your setup. Maybe you're gonna go to a thrift store or an army surplus store and try and get your first, first pair of wool pants. So that's challenge one to this video. Challenge number two is I invite you just to explore your relationship to the cold a little bit more. You know, maybe you're gonna go out and just sit in your backyard or go for a little walk on a, a colder day and pay attention to the birds, but underdress on purpose. Let your body get a little bit cold, but don't sit there and thinking about it and complaining. Try and focus on the birds in the background. Get excited about a set of tracks and just allow yourself to get a little bit cold and, and just be okay with it. And when you come back to your house, try not to focus on, oh my goodness, I'm so cold, I need to warm up. Go and get some food, go eat some healthy fat. Uh, just try not to get into that story of, oh, I'm so cold, this is so bad right now. Try to just be like, okay, I'm a bit cold, who cares? I'm cold. I can still focus on things and still be excited about things and be a little bit cold. That goes a long ways as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I would love to hear your comments 
in uh, the uh, in the comment section below. Uh, share your tips if you tried anything from here, uh, what you learned, if you got questions, share them there. And stay tuned for the next video because we're going to be exploring all kinds of other fun things right now, learning from the trees, the birds, the wildlife, uh, and going a whole bunch deeper. Okay, everybody, time to go work on that challenge. Cheers. Toxic.